Dear students, welcome to the introduction of vector algebra. In this video, we will discuss very important concepts, basic concepts in this chapter of vector algebra. So dear children, let us think about the definition of a vector quantity. A quantity that has both magnitude and direction is called a vector quantity. As we know, this force and velocity etc. are best examples of vector quantities. Imagine that you want to open the front door of your house and now it is closed. So before applying the pushing force, you know that you cannot open the door by pulling it towards you. So before applying that force, your brain considers two aspects that in which direction or by which quantity these are the two things that you consider before applying that force so a force has two aspects direction and magnitude that's why this force becomes a very good example for a vector quantity direction is not at all relevant in the case of speed or distance such quantities are called scalar quantities a quantity that has both magnitude and direction is called a vector quantity and it is denoted by vector AB or vector A here capital letter AB and with an arrow on top this is the point from where the vector starts and this is the point where the vector ends and here and this vector is represented by a directed line segment here we can call this vector as vector AB in the name of these points or vector A. These are the two representations of a vector. So next is initial point. I know you are very clear about the concept because uh, that name itself is self-explanatory. Initial point means the point from where the vector starts. Here in this diagram, this point A with coordinates 4, 3, 2 is the point from where this vector starts. Therefore, this point is the initial point of this vector. Okay. Naturally, next is the terminal point. The point where the vector ends is the terminal point of this vector. Here, this B, point B is the terminal point of this vector. Okay. So, Next is magnitude of a vector. Magnitude of a vector is the distance between the initial point and the terminal point. The vector lies in between this initial point and the terminal point. Therefore, this distance is the magnitude of that vector. And it is represented like this. Here, these vertical lines on either side of vector AB or like this. Modulus of vector A. Next is position vector of a point. Corresponding to the position of a point in the space, we can draw vectors starting from origin and ending at those points. Such vectors are called the position vector of these points with respect to origin. Once again, if we draw vectors starting from origin to these points, those vectors are called position vectors of these points. Here, this vector A is the position vector of this point A and this B, this vector is the position vector of B and this green vector R is the position vector of this point P. That means a vector corresponding to the position of a point. Next, equal vectors. Suppose we have two vectors like this, vector A and the vector b it is obvious that these vectors are equal because which are the two aspects of a vector direction and magnitude these are the things that determine the quality and quantity of a vector therefore we know that both of these vectors are directed towards this side and this and magnitude the length of these directed line segments are equal also therefore vector a and vector b are equal vectors that means two vectors having equal magnitude and equal direction are called equal vectors. These are equal vectors means 
these are parallel vectors therefore we can place this vector one on the other they will coincide one on the other because they are parallel vectors and they are having equal magnitudes also therefore these are equal vectors vector a and vector b are equal here vector a is equal to vector b negative of a vector here we have a vector ab or vector a and another vector pq called vector b here the direction of this vector is from a to b and the direction of the second vector is from p to q but the size of these two vectors are equal therefore this is the negative of that and that is the negative of this vector that means a vector obtained by changing the direction without changing the magnitude is the negative of the vector okay here in the case of vector ab in order to get the reverse or in order to get the uh, negative of that vector we need to interchange the terminal point and the initial point of the vector here vector ba that means this vector ba is obtained by changing the direction that is here in the case of vector ab a is the initial point b is the terminal point in this case b is the initial point and a is the terminal point therefore vector ba that is the vector with the same magnitude and the opposite direction is represented by negative of the vector ab okay now collinear vectors suppose we have three vectors like this vector a vector b and a vector c these are parallel vectors in space you can see that these are parallel vectors in space such vectors are called collinear vectors but here in this definition given in your textbook ncrt scrt textbook vectors which are parallel to the same line are called collinear vectors then what is the role of this straight line among these vectors to be collinear see these are free vectors we can place these vectors anywhere or we can shift these vectors without changing the direction or magnitude since these vectors are subjected to such change without changing the magnitude and direction we can place these vectors anywhere in the space as we wish here if we if i place this vector here coinciding the terminal point a line we can draw a straight line passing through these two vectors and this also is a parallel vector therefore parallelly we can shift this vector and place it here now all these three vectors are able to be aligned here on a straight line now now all these three vectors are aligned like this this alignment is possible because these three vectors were parallel at the beginning therefore actually parallel vectors vectors which are parallel to each other are called collinear vectors because we can align these vectors like this along a straight line okay that's why these three vectors are collinear vectors therefore collinear vectors means vectors which are parallel to a same line that's the role of a straight line among these vectors okay next is a unit vector a vector whose magnitude is unity is called a unit vector here we have a vector its magnitude is 3 let us make it 4 uh, for instance here we have a vector b with magnitude 4 its magnitude is not equal to 1 therefore it is not a unit vector so by shrinking this vector we can make it a unit vector now the length of this vector is equal to 1 therefore this vector is called b cap that means b cap is the unit vector in the direction of the first vector b so how did we get this vector b cap by dividing that vector or shrinking that vector into its 1 by 4 we got this unit vector therefore this unit vector b cap is the unit vector of vector b when we think about or when we discuss these unit vectors here we have three prominent personalities just like i cap j cap and k cap here this vector along the positive direction of x axis is called i cap we can place this i cap anywhere 
It's not confined to that axis. We can place it anywhere in the space. Here we have another vector j cap in the direction of positive direction of y axis. This k cap is a unit vector in the direction of positive direction of uh, z axis. Okay. So if we increase the length of this unit vector like this, this 4k is not a unit vector now. This vector 4k cap is obtained by multiplying that unit vector k cap by the scalar 4. Okay. From that name itself, it's clear that coinitial vector, suppose we have a vector a here, starting from a, and from the and from the very same point a, if we draw another vector like this, vector b and vector a are having same initial point. Therefore, these type of vectors having same initial point are called co-initial vectors. So it's very clear I think. Next is a zero vector. A zero vector is a vector whose initial point and terminal points coincide. Here we have a vector AB. This is the initial point, this is a terminal point. Its magnitude is not zero, it's four. So in order to make it a zero vector, we have to shrink this vector or we have to make this B lie on this point A. So we by reducing into uh, a zero vector, this B coincides with the A. Therefore, we got a vector starting from A and ending in the same point A. We call it as AA or BB. Its direction now, is it in the same direction of the previous vector? Can we say like that? No, because when we reduce the length into zero, it has no direction now, but its magnitude is zero. Therefore, that such vectors are represented by this notation. Okay. The idea about the direction ratios and cosines will be given in the next video. Now we can move on to the addition of vectors. Here we have two vectors, vector A and vector B. Vector A is the initial point of the first vector and B is the terminal point of the first vector. So these vectors are subjected to parallel shifting without changing the magnitude or direction. So we can place this vector anywhere as we wish. So here, if we place this vector here, such that the initial point of the second vector coincides with the terminal point of the first vector, we will get a triangle like this. So if we arrange these two vectors like this, the third side of the triangle represents the sum or the certain of these two vectors. Okay, this is the, this AC is the sum of these two vectors A and B. Therefore, if we consider these two vectors taken in order, the direction of the sum of these two vectors is in the just opposite direction of this because here A and B are moving in this direction or in the anticlockwise direction. Now this vector, the sum vector or the resultant vector is in the reverse direction or that is in the clockwise direction. Okay. So in order to get the difference of two vectors, that is A minus B, that means here this AB is the first vector and BC is the second vector. In order to get the difference of these vectors, we are actually adding the vector AB with the negative of the second vector. So in order to see at the beginning, vector B is like this. So in order to get the difference of these vectors, we need to get this negative of this vector. How will you get this negative of this vector? By changing or reversing the direction of this vector, we will get a negative of the second vector. So, we can draw this vector like this. See, the vector B changes direction to get this negative of this B. So, by adding this vector A with the negative of the vector B, we get the difference of these vectors, vector A minus vector B. Therefore, vector A minus B is the vector obtained by adding A with negative of this vector B. Okay, with this concept of triangle of addition, let's stop here today. Dear children, I will make this applex available to you in my blog, pradeesmas.blogspot. And you can interact with this software as I am doing here. That will give you very concrete idea about all these basic concepts. Okay, thank you.